All right, I'd like to get started, please. Hello? Hello? Oh, for half credit only, yeah. Okay, I'm ready to go, Ray. Okay, uh, graphing red functions, okay? So today's the last topic of chapter two. Tomorrow you're gonna to be working on review 25 to 27. You have a test on Tuesday. 2527 test on Tuesday. Top left hand corner. There we go. And here's your test. Okay, so today it's all about graphing rational functions. And there are like five different steps you need to go through, okay? Five different steps that you need to go through. So, finding the y-intercept. How do you find the y-intercept? Make x equal 0. So, if you do that in this, what do you get? Whoa, what happened to my... my whoa, what's going on here? I'm looking for my, uh, my taskbar. What the? Okay, so Noah, you're saying put x equals 0, then what do you get? 0, 0, so your y intercept is 0, 0. Remember, intercepts have points, so you need an x and a y coordinate on that. How do you find the x intercept? And then what do you get if you do that? Yeah. What do you get if you put y equals 0? So the x and the y intercepts are the same point. It's the origin. Okay. How about the VA? How do you find the VA? How do you find the vertical asymptotes? Yeah. Elizabeth? Okay. And if you factor the denominator, so in other words, you set this equal to 0, the denominator to 0. Okay. X plus 2 x minus 1. So your v is x equals negative 2, x equals, sorry, 1. So that's your vertical asymptotes. How about the h a? How about the h a, the horizontal asymptotes? There were three rules I gave you yesterday, a, b, and c. You guys do your homework. Maybe it's time for a chicken run. Didn't you have to use one of those rules yesterday then? Well then. Sorry? Yeah. Hello? Get your notes out and read it then, right? I mean, if you don't know, you'll have to look at your notes. It is the x-axis. And the equation for the x-axis is y equals 0. And then I need some points, okay? So let's not do the points until we kind of put all these features on there and then decide what points we want, okay? So here's my axis. And I've got one per box there. That's my scale. Uh, let's start putting some features down. So... Here's my x and y intercept, so it's going through the origin. I have asymptotes at x equals 1. So asymptotes are drawn as dotted lines. So here's my one vertical asymptote. Here's my other vertical asymptote. Okay. Uh, what else? My horizontal asymptote is uh, y equals 0, the x-axis. Okay, so this is going to be my horizontal asymptote. So this kind of gives you an idea about what points to choose in your table, okay? So you know something funky is happening around at minus 2. So why don't we just do a minus 4, a minus 3. Then something's happening between minus 1, uh, minus 2 and the origin, so do a minus 1. I already have the origin there, so I'm okay. Uh, maybe we should do a half because then I want to know what the behavior is between 0 and 1. And then beyond that, I'm going to do a 2. 
So thou shalt fill in this table while I shall do my lazy ass way of doing it because I can. You can't. <laughs> Guys, waiting for me to get the answer now. Ah, Brandon, no, no. Ah, uh, okay. I'm gonna pause here. Come around and see that you guys are on. Yeah. What? What happened? What happened? <laughs> okay, suck up. That's a very profound question. That's a that's a very profound question. Yeah, I mean that gets down to life basically. Question of what does it mean to be alive? It means to be able to use Casio? Just don't tell me. I won't know. I won't know. Okay, uh, Ray, what'd you get for point five, dude? Ray, what'd you get for point five? Oh, ah, see, you have to up there. For point 0.5? No, it's not. It's 0 0.4. When x is a half, are you smoking? Ray, can you confirm that? Point four? Point four? For negative, oh, sorry, I did a negative point five, my bad. I want a plus point five. What the? A negative point eight, you're right. Ooh, Noah, ooh. Okay, negative point, negative zero point eight, right? Negative zero. Okay, Noah, rub it in. Rub it in. Your turn will come. Okay, so that's what I got there. And then when x is negative 1, I get a 1, so it's out here. And so you can kind of see that the graph is going to kind of do some funky thing like that. Okay? And then when it is 2, it's a 1, so it's there. And then it's going to do some funky thing that's going to be like that. So can you guys get your graphing calculator out and see that that is indeed true? Okay. So notice all the steps you need to take in order to do the graph. Okay, you need a table there so you can see some points. It gives you a slant asymptote. In other words, it's going to be at an angle. Okay. And the only time you get a slant asymptote is when the degree of the numerator is exactly one more than the denominator. Exactly one more than the denominator. Okay, at that time you get a slant asymptote. Because if you were to follow the rules yesterday, okay, it would tell you that, hey, there are no asymptotes. There are no horizontal asymptotes from yesterday's rules. But in this specific condition, okay, where the degree of the numerator is exactly one more than the denominator, you do get a slant asymptote. And the way you get, remember asymptotes are lines, so you want an equation of a line that's going to be your asymptote. Okay? So in this one here, the way you get your slant asymptote is by doing long division. Okay? 
So this is where long div comes into place. So you could do a 2x there, the 2x cubed plus 2x. Subtract, you get a 2x squared minus a 2x. Is everybody with me on this? Yeah. Oh, why did I? Hang on, hang on. No. This should be a half. Yeah. No, are you rubbing it in even more? God, you are evil, man. You are evil. Uh, so what was I? Uh, so this guy should be a half x. Is that right? This should be a half x. And so this should be minus a half x. I think it's all Elizabeth's fault. She just totally confused me. <laughs> okay, did, did I do this right? Is everybody okay on this? Yes? Yeah? Shree? Ray, is that okay? You can't, right? Because we are looking at we are looking at slant asymptote, not vertical asymptotes. Okay. Slant. Like, could you do synthetic if you put x equals on the bottom? Well, how do you do synthetic when you've got a quadratic downstairs? Remember, synthetic is for linear factors only. Unless, there is a trick for doing quadratic, but I've forgotten that. There's a girl called Mariana Mao. I don't know how many people, everybody knows Mariana Mao, right? No. no? She graduated like two years ago. She was one of these kids who took calculus in eighth grade. Oh. Yeah, nice. So she was saying something about it, and I said, yeah, I think I know what you're saying, but I didn't. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so I'm not done with this long div, okay? I'm not done with the long div. So now I'm going to do plus 1. So I get 2x squared uh, plus 1 here. And then if I subtract, and you don't need to finish this off, okay? I don't care what that is. As long as you get a linear equation up here, okay, and you will always get a linear equation, that's the equation of your slant asymptote. That's the equation of your slant asymptote. Okay? So everybody know how to get a slant asymptote. You do long div, okay? Long div. Okay, is everybody there? Okay, all right, let's go finish this graph off then. Uh, where are we? So we, you did long div and you got your equation and then you guys are gonna carry this forward now, okay? So you're gonna do um, intercepts, vertical asymptote, slant asymptote, some points and then graph that, okay? So can you guys uh, continue with this and finish this off without a graphing calculator? Oh, oh no, I'm going to rub it in to you now. Oh. Yes. Yeah, that's exactly what it looks like. Okay, just to make sure you guys have got this down, okay? So the equation of your slant asymptote was what? One half x plus one. Okay. Slant asymptote was one half x plus one. Okay. So when x is zero, y is one. So it's going to go through that point. And when y is zero, x is negative two. So your slant asymptote should be going like this. Okay. All right. Okay. And then you need to make a table. So your table should have. Uh, so that's minus 1, minus 2, so, so you should have minus 4 and a minus 3, uh, a minus 1, you already have a, z uh, no, we need a 0, and then a 1 and a 2. Okay, so that's what your table should have. Okay, that's what your table should have. Sorry? I mean, just look at it, you know that these are your, this is your asymptote, right? So, and it, the asymptote is crossing the x-axis there. So I'm going to need all my points on one side of the graph of this guy and on the other side. I mean, the only feature you have is your asymptote. 
you don't know what's happening around the asymptote. So that's how you're going to decide. Your asymptote is crossing the x-axis at negative 2. So you're going to need points at negative 4, negative 3, and then negative 1, 0, 1. So you need to fill this in, okay? And then plot those points. Is everybody okay on this as to what you do? And then if you check it on your graphing calculator, it looks like this. Looks like that. Yeah, it looks pretty funky. It looks pretty funky. Okay? And then when you do this kind of problem in calculus, you can take it a step further and find out exactly where this is. Yeah. Okay, so that'll be next year, it'll be exactly. All right, so that's the, uh, the end of the lecture today then, okay?